Okay, so we look at Max Payne 2 at 21 by 9. I loved Max Payne 3. It was my first introduction to the series, and I've played through it a lot of times. The gameplay is superb, the story gritty and well told, and the graphics are brilliant. It's a fantastic game. However, I've always heard people talk about the previous games and that they were superior somehow, so I finally have gotten around to play the second game, and whilst it's good, it doesn't hold a candle to the third game in any respect. However, it's still really good fun, and holds up well after 15 years since its launch. Wow, I can't believe it's that old. But anyway, before I talk about the gameplay, let's go over the 21x9 support. So there is no native ultra-wide support, everything just gets stretched to fill the screen. However, thankfully there is a brilliantly easy mod by, I believe, UB Doble, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Thanks to whoever created it regardless, it's really appreciated. So to get the fix working, go to the link in the description and download the mod on the page. Once it's downloaded, unzip the file and go inside the Max Payne 2 widescreen fix folder so you can see the scripts in the .dll file. Then, in another explorer window, navigate to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and find the Max Payne 2 game folder. Go inside and drag over the downloaded two files into the game folder here, and now you can launch the game and gameplay will correctly scale to 21x9. However, the HUD will still be stuck at 16x9 as you can see in my gameplay, and yes, I'm afraid I only went and fixed the HUD to 21x9 after I recorded all this because I literally played and recorded everything in one setting right away as I was just totally in the mood to play, so yeah, the HUD here is 16x9, however you can shift the HUD to the sides. To do this, you want to go back to the Max Payne 2 game folder within the Steam common folder and find the scripts folder. Open that up, and inside is a file called maxpain2.widescreenfix.ini. Open it up in Notepad. Here is where you can change a load of settings, such as HUD positioning. Change the HUD value to 240, then save and close the file, and now your HUD will correctly display on the sides of the screen. Now, that 240 number works on my 3440 by 1440 screen, however the value might be different if you're at 2560 by 1080 Just play around with the number, close the game, change the number, save the file, reopen the game, and just see where the HUD is. However, even after all these tweaks, the game isn't perfect at 21 by 9 So, whilst the gameplay does now correctly render the world at 21 by 9 the very extremities of the screen will experience some weird freezing and blurring of objects as they fail to render correctly. It's only on the very extreme sides of the screen, so it's not really noticeable, but at times it can be more obvious than others. The main menu is 4x3 with black bars, however it does mean it's not distorted in any way, and a 4x3 to 21 by 9 stretch is a huge distortion, so whilst I would usually prefer it to stretch to fill the screen space here, I'm actually glad it's centered correctly. The same applies to in-game menus and the main cutscenes which are picture boards. In-game cutscenes however do correctly render at 21 by 9 and screen effects correctly fill the entire screen space. However, the scopes on guns like the MP5 and the sniper, this screen is stretched from 4x3 and fills the screen and it does look a bit ridiculous, but at least it works fine. Lastly, loaded screens are weirdly squashed into an even smaller than 4x3 space, but you're hardly looking at them for long. As for general PC support, there are a number of other issues, most specifically being that there is no native controller support. However, thankfully, there is a brilliantly easy fix for this. I covered the rewasd or rewasd tool in a video a while ago and I'll link to it in the description if you want more info on it, but basically this tool allows you to rebind any key on your Xbox One Elite or Xbox One controller to any key binding or input you can imagine. So I used it to bind the mouse to the analog stick, etc, and it works perfectly. I know there are other tools for different controllers out there, but this absolutely is the best I've come across. Use the controller configuration on screen if you want to copy my controller layout. I just copied Max Payne 3's layout as best as possible. It is still clunky switching weapons as there's no easy weapon wheel, but that's generally a small point. The other small issue is there is only the ability to crouch with the key held. There is no toggle button, which I hate, so I actually didn't bother binding the crouch ability to the controller because in this game you don't really need it. The other issue is that you need to lean forward and use the mouse or keyboard arrows to navigate the menus, though that said you could just create a shift modifier using the rewsd tool that allows you to temporarily change the controller inputs to arrow keys and the enter key and then you could just navigate the menus with your controller. I didn't bother to do this but it's probably a good idea to do. 
On the same train of thought, the game requires you to manually save. There are infrequent automatic checkpoints. So to save yourself from having to lean forward to hit F5 and F9 to save and reload all the time, you should tie them to your controller as well. Lovely and easy. And of course, if you just want to play with the mouse and keyboard, you can rebind all keys on your keyboard to anything you want within the game's option menu, which is great. Performance wise, well, the game came out in 2003, so it isn't exactly graphically demanding, and thanks to an unlocked frame rate and a general lack of other stupid PC issues you've seen in many other games, it runs beautifully. At 3440 by 1440 on a GTX 1080 Ti, I stayed usually over 200 FPS at all moments, so yeah, you should be fine. That said, it isn't a bad looking game, it certainly shows its age with textures and animations, but it still looks solid. One issue, however, is that every time you hit quick save, the game freezes temporarily. It's annoying when certainly with current tech this shouldn't need to happen, but again, it's a small point, it's not going to ruin the fun. So gameplay wise, this is a run and gun game quite simply. It's not very complex, simply fight your way through levels without dying. There is some fun level traversal and whilst the levels are pretty much completely linear, they are somewhat fleshed out to make them feel more than just a corridor. I have nothing against this kind of level design as tightly built environments can bring fantastically solid gameplay. That said, this is in the middle ground. It's not perfect, but it's not bad at all. Levels have high and low angles to get attacked from, there is somewhat of a system for rewarding exploring the little extra areas, but yeah, the levels are pretty forgettable. I can't remember any levels distinctly, unlike Max Payne 3 where levels really had a personality. But that's not really a fair comparison because Max Payne 3 had a huge edge of significantly better graphics, so that's going to help make levels more memorable. What is key to Max Payne 2's fun though is the gunplay. As Max, you have an adrenaline meter which allows you to pull off his iconic slow-mo dives as you spray bullets into enemies, and it is just plain cool. You feel like you're out of something like The Matrix. It's superb. It turns what would be an okay shooter into a really fun one. Yes, I do miss a lot of the smoothed movement mechanics of the third game, such as getting up from the floor forces you to stop shooting, and just general movement is not accurate. You're required to walk over narrow sections and jump across small platforms, but the controls simply aren't as accurate as you'd want. Again though, it's not the end of the world at all, it's still totally playable, but it's another sign of the game's age. Talking of aging too, this is from the era of games having manual saving, like I said, something we really aren't used to now in anything but Bethesda titles, but it can be painful dying way into a level and realising you forgot to quick save and so have to restart the entire level. Saves do automatically occur after like a cutscene, but yeah, remember to hit that save button. There is also no automatic health regen, instead you have to use your painkillers which you can find around the world, and they are generally well placed, usually just providing enough health to survive. I wasn't ever really overfilled with them, and when I ran out it was just because I was being bad at avoiding unnecessary hits. You also don't have the ability to zoom in with your weapons, other than for scoped weapons. It would be great to have the option to zoom slightly and have your camera movement speed slow down to gain greater accuracy, but yeah, without it you sometimes will find small adjustments to aiming a little awkward. Voice acting is, to be honest, pretty abysmal. Max maintains the same gruff, toughened voice, but it lacks a quality edge to it, and the same can be said for all other voice acting. It's certainly noticeable and really does take away from the believability of the story, just your immersion factor is decreased because of it. Now a strange feature to the visuals is the way the game displays outside environments. See on screen what I mean. Somehow the world in the distance and the objects close by move in a very weird way and I'm very glad you don't have to deal with this much because it very quickly made my head spin a bit as it really just doesn't work well. But yes, thankfully it's only in small doses so you'll not be seeing this much. Now a trait unfortunately this and the third Max Payne game experience is repetitiveness. This even more so. After a few hours you simply aren't getting enough gameplay development, you aren't acquiring new skills or facing new challenges, it's just more enemies in different locations. It's not boring, but it does mean I advise playing for a few hours than leaving it for a while before continuing, otherwise you'll just simply get tired of the same style of level design throughout the entire game. 
There is a nice wide weapon selection to use with pistols either in single or dual wield, and you have assault weapons and SMGs, and every weapon does feel distinctly different and not just stuck in for no reason. However, I certainly felt the M4 got way underused most of the game. You can easily mod this game as well, with native built-in support to the game launcher for playing modded versions. Overall, whilst not a perfect game by any means, with slightly repetitive gameplay and an aging aesthetic to all aspects, it's still a damned fun game. It's a great way to feel like an action hero, diving through the air in slow motion killing enemies is always a badass feeling, and I totally recommend picking this up if you've played Max Payne 3 and want more but don't want to replay the third game again. If you haven't already played the third however, play that first then come to this. You can also pick this up for very cheap so that certainly makes it more worthwhile. I'm going to give it a WAF score of 2, unfortunately even though gameplay does work at 21 by 9 it still has rendering issues on the sides and far too many parts of the game have black bars, but it's still great fun to play at 21 by 9 So I hope that gives you some information how the game runs at 21 by 9 give this video a like if you found it helpful and subscribe for future info. For any of the games at 21 by 9 head over to my channel, the WAF website, hopefully I've covered it, if I haven't then leave a comment down below and I'll try and cover it, and if you'd like to support the channel the links to my Patreon page are in the description and Amazon affiliate links are there too. See you later. Whack him! You understand, this is an over-our-dead-bodies kind of situation. We've got an intruder, probably more than one. None of them's getting past this... No!